So you want to edit videos, but you don't know where the heck to start. Trust me, I've been there before. You've probably been surfing YouTube and inhaling a ton of opinions on what software to use and why. But the simple fact is, you made it to the promised land, baby. I've used all three of the big softwares, Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and Resolve, but here's three reasons why Resolve is just the best. DaVinci Resolve is actually not that hard to use, even as a beginner. It's the only editing software that is highly optimized for both Mac and PC. Finally, and most importantly, it's freaking free. So you better strap in, kid, because today I'm taking you on a tour through the promised land of DaVinci Resolve. Today's video is sponsored by Loop Deck. I'll be using this beautiful little Loop Deck Live right here to help me edit today with some fancy keyboard shortcuts and stuff. But keep in mind that everything I'm going to teach you about Resolve today can be done with just a mouse and keyboard. But if you do like little gadgets like this, check out the links in the description. And also, I'm going to be giving away two Loop Decks, and all you have to do is join my free Discord server. So check that out, and now let's get into Resolve. Okay, so the very first thing you got to do is download Resolve. I'm not going to teach you how to do that because there'll just be a link in the description to get Resolve and you got to open it. So bing bong, click it and it will open. This is the very first thing you're going to see in DaVinci Resolve and you won't have this folder here. This is just something I've made. The folders are a really nice option to help organize your projects. So let's say, for instance, you do have clients. You can make a client folder and then you can make a like a... YouTube video folder if you want. You can make YouTube shorts. Literally whatever you want to come up with is great. One thing to keep in mind is when you go into a folder and create a project, butt cheeks. So if you're in butt cheeks and you're like, wait, how do I get out of butt cheeks? All you have to do is click on projects. They need to fix this so it looks like an actual button. But just keep in mind, if you go into a folder, you just click this here on projects and it will take you back to that other menu. Since this video is geared toward beginners, this is really all you need to know about this opening menu here. So let's actually just make a new project and just call it first DaVinci Edit. DaVinci Ninjaj. Here we go. DaVinci Ninjaj. First DaVinci Edit. So I hit enter to get into this menu. Now we're in a project. We have created a project. Step one is complete. If this is your very first time in Resolve, I understand it can be intimidating and it will make you want to quit because it's a new software, but that doesn't mean it's complicated. It just means it's uncomfortable. So just immerse yourself in it if you really want to learn, because I think DaVinci is genuinely the future of video editing for the foreseeable future. And the fact that it's free is crazy. So let's just take a little tour through Resolve really quickly. Let's just chill. Okay. I'm going to guide you. You just sit back in the Jeep and I'll take you through the Safari. So down here is really all you need to worry about. These are the main tabs that will take you through all of DaVinci. The good thing is you really are only going to use a couple of them as a beginner. This one that it automatically starts you on the cut page, I literally never use this. So let's check out the media page. This is also one I don't really use, to be honest, but you can import your footage here. I'm just going to teach you how I do it because I think the way I do it is faster, um, but it's all up to personal preference. So I start out in the edit tab and this is pretty much where I live like 80% of the time in my video editing. So automatically it has effects open, but you can get rid of that by just clicking on effects. So basically these are all individual things you can click on and get rid of if you don't want to see them. The ones I use the most are effects and media pool. I don't really use the other two at all. Over here is some other things that I don't really use other than inspector. So really the only things I use for my professional video editing is media pool, effects, an inspector. And I have my media pool set to the tab keyboard shortcut, which just makes things a lot faster for me. So I can access files quickly, which brings us to the next big step is importing your media. Honestly, video editing doesn't have to be complicated and messy as long as you are an organized editor. And that all comes down to just personal discipline. So I'm just going to run you through how I organize all my projects and you can just copy mine if you want because it's pretty efficient for both like YouTube videos, Instagram reels, and client projects as well. So I'm going to hit media pool or tab as I have it set up on my keyboard. Oh, and also I should mention this. For keyboard customization, I'm going to show you guys my preset here. I'm just going to leave it in the description. There'll be a link down there because you can export presets. So I'm going to export my keyboard shortcuts that I have set up so that you can just edit exactly like me if you want. I think I've set it up to be really fast, so feel free to download that for free. 
Okay, now let's talk about importing media. Sorry, if my brain gets scrambled in this video, it's because this is dense, but I'm gonna keep it digestible for you. So your organization all starts in the Finder or your folders if you're a PC person. By the way, if you're a Mac user and you like to have your windows snap into a perfect half of the screen, if you'd like, there's a program called Cinch that you can download for free. Ooh. And when you enable it, you can just cinch things to your desktop or your windows and it feels so good. So this is my personal SSD that houses all of my current projects. I like to put these two little slashes here just for like main folders. So this is my main YouTube channel, Zach Mayfield. And here's YouTube videos and shorts. So here's my YouTube videos. So let's go into my most recent YouTube video. Um, forget the DJI Air 3, buy this drone instead. So if you double click, these are all the folders that I use for every single YouTube project. And in order for me to keep it quick when I wanna make these folders for every project, if you go back two tabs, I have this template that I've made where I just select these, I hit Command C to copy, and I go back into like a new YouTube folder and then I can just paste them in there. And they're all empty, but it just gives me a fast starting place. And that way it keeps everything the same for every single project that I make. So I have like archival footage if I'm pulling old videos, audio files, these are where the final exports go, graphics, media clips if I'm downloading things from the internet, music, original footage, photos, thumbnails, sound effects, you get it. Let's say your video is already shot and you just wanna get this into DaVinci to start editing. What I do is I don't use every single one of these folders in DaVinci. But what I do is I just hold down command and I grab all of the ones that I do use in DaVinci because I don't need like photos or thumbnails or video exports in there. So I just grab the ones that I do use and then I just drag them and you put them on this little tab next to master and it will just import them in the exact same folder structure. So in my original footage, I already had my A7S III camera, my FX30, my Handycam and my drone and it just automatically populated the folders exactly how it was in my finder. And it's because I dropped it right next to the master tab. Now all of your stuff is in Resolve, but how the heck do you edit the dang video? <laughs> you have everything you need, but now we gotta make something. In order to start making a video, you have to put your footage on, what, go ahead class. Right, a timeline, exactly. So how do we make a timeline? Well, I start by making another bin. These are bins right here. They hold all your stuff. They're folders, bins, they're basically the exact same thing. So I've actually made a shortcut. So if I just click into here, I have a shortcut here on my loop deck that is new bin, and it has made me a bin. And if you download my keyboard shortcuts, I already have it mapped out for you. So you can just make a new bin. New bin I have set to command slash or whatever that is, but I just have command slash routed to my loop deck. So I'm just using my loop deck for some of those shortcuts that take me a while. New bin, and then I'm just gonna name this timelines. So this is just a really good way to keep all of your timelines organized because you might make your main YouTube video and then you might make a one minute version for Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, and all of those will live in here separately so that you keep things organized in case you need to go back and reference a timeline. The next step after making this is right clicking in timelines and hitting create new timeline. Let's just call this main edit V1. And for now, we'll just keep one video track and one audio track and hit create. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves and start dropping in footage, making cuts, music, all that kind of stuff, we have to make sure that Resolve is completely set up the way we want it so that the colors and everything look right when you export, everything sounds good on YouTube or wherever you're going to be posting. So let's just go through like a general settings brief really quick. Follow along class. In order to set everything up, let's go down to this gear down here. Click on that. So now we're in our project settings. I shoot and edit everything in 4K, so I have my master settings set to 3840 by 2160 and 23.976 frames per second because that's what my cameras shoot in, so that's what I want my timelines to default as. If you shoot in HD or something different, there's a bunch of different options in here, or you can just make something custom. That's the only setting you have to worry about on this page, so we can just forget about that. I don't worry about image scaling. I go to color management. Now, for me, I'm posting all of my content on YouTube. So I have this set up specifically for that. If you're posting on like Vimeo for some reason or, or some other place, you're gonna have to look up what that place's color space is. But YouTube's color space works really well in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. I know that sounds confusing and I don't know exactly what it means, but all you need to know is when you have it set up like this, whatever your colors look like in DaVinci, it will look the exact same when you upload it to YouTube. 
and you want it to be the same. Because if you're going to spend all this time editing and color grading and making it look beautiful, you want it to look beautiful where it's going to live after that. I also just leave this as DaVinci YRGB, and then that's it for the color management settings. After color management, the only other tab we have to make an adjustment in is Fairlight. So Fairlight is actually this tab down here with the music note. This is just how you control and edit all of your audio. We're not gonna worry too much about that right now, but basically all you need to do is set this number to negative 14. And basically all that means is once you mix and balance your audio, like before you export your video, if it sounds good in DaVinci and it's set to negative 14, that's what's gonna make it sound good on YouTube as well. If it's set to something different, your video might end up being too loud or too quiet, but negative 14 is a really good sweet spot for YouTube. So just trust me on this one, it sounds good. And you just need to set it like that and then you'll be good to go. That's all we have to do for these project settings. It wasn't too bad, right? We're done with that techie specky stuff. But in order to make it stick, you wanna click on these top three little dots here and then click set current settings as default preset. So once you do that, Mine's already set that way, so I can hit update if I want, but you'll be able to save it like that so that every time you open DaVinci Resolve and edit a video, you don't have to do those settings anymore. It will just be defaulted to that. Then you hit save and you're good to go with project settings. Just let it go, baby. We're good now. So we're fully set up and now it's time to just get into basic editing. One thing you might want to do if you're shooting a YouTube video is to make like an A-roll timeline and then a B-roll timeline just to pull out the different B-roll shots you've got before you put it into the main video. So let's say for the main edit here, this is where the, the story, the main video is gonna be. So let's start pulling selects and that just means grabbing the clips and segments that you want in the video. All you gotta do is double click on the file right here for the video you wanna pull from and you can scrub by holding down on your mouse here and then when it gets to the part that you want the clip to start, like right before I'm talking, you're gonna hit I to set an endpoint, and then you're gonna scrub to where you want it to stop. Let's just go, let's go here, how about? Hit O, so now you've selected this part, and then all you do is hit comma, and that will drop it into the timeline. Now I'm gonna hit the minus button to zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing, or you can hit Shift Z to see the full length of the timeline, or it will zoom in a little bit, zoom out. Now if we click down here and hit spacebar, we have, we're started, baby. We got a video in the works now. How sick is this? You can see in my keyboard customization that I have I set to mark in, O set to mark out, and comma set to append to end of timeline. And once again, if you just download my preset and import it by clicking up here, import preset, then you'll be set up exactly like me. And it's kind of the best. Cocky. So now you just go through this process for your main story to get all the clips that you want. So let's go to this next shot and find the other clip that I want. Let's say it's right here. I, drag, O, comma. And every time, even if your playhead is right here, when you hit comma, it'll still put it at the very end. So don't worry about it like cutting into the previous clips you've already put in there. Now, if you need to navigate through this timeline quickly, there's a couple different ways. You can drag by doing this, clicking and holding and dragging, or you can just use the up and down arrow. So up goes backwards, down goes forwards, and that's a really quick way to get to the front of clips. Also, if you see when I'm dragging here, it will click down on that cut, boom, it like latches on. That's because we have snap turned on. You can turn that on and off by hitting S. I like to keep it on most of the time, but if I need to do like a micro adjustment, I'll zoom in a little bit by holding down option using the scroll wheel on my mouse. Maybe turn it off or hit S to turn it off. And then you can just do slight adjustments like this. But I'm gonna leave snap on for now. Now let's say you do need to do a little micro cut. Like see how there's a little bit of space here before I start talking? Let's say I wanna cut that out. There's a couple different ways to do that. So I can hit C and when, when I hit it, you can see that it enables the cut tool right here. Um, so I could just chop right before that and then I can just hit delete because it cut that. Um, but if I want to get back to my grab tool, because right now I'm just chopping th things up, command Z, command Z, command Z. If I want to get back to the grab tool, I hit V. And then you can see there's a gap here. You don't want to just select everything and grab all the time because that will take forever. All you got to do is click in this space and you see it highlights it gray and then hit X and it will snap that back together. Sorry, that looks a little weird. Let me show you again. I'll zoom out, click in there, hit delete or X, and it will connect those gaps. 
I know that was quick, but that's basically just how you do quick edits in DaVinci Resolve. It's really not that difficult if you can master these simple tools of just cutting, grabbing, dropping footage into your timeline. It's not too bad, honestly. If you need to make more tracks, all you do is right click over here and add a track and you can name these by holding down shift and like scrolling up, you can see there's more information there. So if you just hold shift and keep your mouse over here, you just scroll up. You can just click in here and say A roll. You can do B roll. And then you can do the same with the audio down here by adding tracks. You can add mono, stereo, other fun stuff. As a beginner, you're probably making YouTube videos or social media videos, and that usually requires A roll, like we just cut a little bit of, and B roll. So let's say you wanna edit some B roll to put on top of your A roll, cause you already chopped it all up and you got your A roll timeline. So we're gonna go back to our timelines here and just right click, timeline, create new timeline, drone selects. I like to keep things tidy, you know? So let's go over to my Mavic. I'm gonna double click on this clip, find a shot that I like. This was from when I was in LA for the Spider-Man video. Let's say I like this clip right here. So in, out, comma. So here's my B-roll. In our timelines, we got our drone selects, we got our main edit. Let's say we wanna put a drone clip of B-roll on top of our main edit. You might be wondering, dude, why do I gotta click between these dang timelines? Probably you have to copy, go back here, paste it. Didn't even work for some reason, you know, it's stupid. All you gotta do to make this even better, this is great for YouTube and anything with B-roll, click on this little guy right here, and you have your timeline view options. I know, it's a new menu, can be a little stressful, but I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just gonna show you it, okay? It's fine. This guy right here, stacked timelines, is gonna be your best friend when you're adding B-roll. You're gonna click on this, and now it has added this little plus button here, so you can add the other timelines that you made. And this is why it's so important to keep separate timelines for your selects because it makes things actually way quicker in the long run. So now I have my drone selects and my main footage right here. So I'm gonna take this drone clip, hit copy, go back here, hit paste, boom, there it is. Now you can see if my playhead's here and I hit paste, it pastes over this. And I actually want it to be in the B-roll channel, so I'm gonna command Z. There's two ways to fix that. This right here is the auto track selector. So you can disable the A-roll timeline, hit paste. It's right there. And then you can re-enable that if you need to. Or let's just leave both of these on. Another quick trick is you could just pull this up, hit copy, and then paste. And because you copied it from this second channel, it pasted on the second channel. That's how I do it because I think it's a little bit faster because here, let me make another couple selects to show you why. <laughs> now, let's just say this is all of our B-roll. Basically, you can see the clips you've already used because you dragged it up into that second channel. So if you're like, oh, I think this part of the B-roll would be good for my main edit. I'm gonna cut this, drag it up, hit copy, go here, hit paste. Now it's there sitting on top of my video. You can go back to your drone selects and see, oh, I've already used this clip, so maybe I'll try this one right here or something like that. It's a great way to continue organizing your footage while you're editing and it doesn't take any extra time, so it's really convenient. So you've cut some A-roll, you've cut your B-roll together and maybe you have a nice little timeline put together and you wanna start making some little adjustments. I totally understand. For instance, an adjustment you might wanna make is if you see this drone footage here, it's actually not filling up the entire frame because it's shot in a different resolution. So what you can do is click on this, go over to inspector. If it's not open, you just click on it like that. I leave it open all the time, by the way. But in order to get rid of this, you would just click down on zoom and you would just hold. And then you can just drag to the right or to the left. So you don't have to type in numbers. You can actually just drag your mouse back and forth to quickly adjust. And yeah, now you have this other drone clip here. And instead of going back and doing the same thing for all of your different drone clips, what you can do is click on the one you've already adjusted, hit command C, and now what you're gonna do is paste those attributes onto this clip so that it looks the exact same. All the attributes means is the changes you've made to the clip. I have this one fast tracked on my loop deck so I don't have to right click and find, where is it? Paste attributes here. So instead of finding it or using the keyboard shortcut, I have it set up on my loop deck so I just hit paste attributes. And then I just gotta click position and zoom and that's all of the scaling that we did to the first clip. Hit enter, and boom, it zoomed in for us. So this is how fast it actually looks if you're doing it in real time. So let's say I want to adjust this clip. Click here, zoom in a little bit, Command C to copy, click there, paste attributes, enter. And now this one looks the exact same. Once you paste these attributes and select position and zoom once, 
the rest of the times that you hit paste attributes, you don't have to select those things anymore. It just populates it. So let's say I had all these drone clips in here as B-roll. I'm just gonna lift this up, make sure snap is on. All I would have to do is click Command C, highlight these, paste attributes, hit enter. And now all of my B-roll clips have the same attributes. They're all zoomed in perfectly and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Thanks, Loop Deck. And while we're at it, I wanna show you a couple of other fun little keyboard shortcut tools that I use frequently in editing that I've mapped to my Loop Deck to make it even faster. So let's make a new timeline. We're gonna go create timeline archival selects. So this is like for old YouTube videos or childhood videos that I use in my YouTube projects sometimes. I would have all of those saved in archival already in my finder. So I would pull these into archival. Yes, the entire clips. I know it seems overwhelming because it's like, oh, I gotta sort through all this and find the exact video clips that I want. Well, I can make it way faster. So if I select all these, DaVinci has this amazing function called detect cuts, I think. Timeline, where is it? This is taking me forever to find. I wish there was a better way. Detect scene cuts. Oh yeah, instead of sorting through the menus, I have it mapped to my loop deck to just hit detect cuts and it does it automatically for me. So what it's doing is going through all these videos and making chops every single time there's a cut in the video. And it will save you a booty ton of time in editing if you pull clips from other videos like so many YouTubers do. Hey, and if you want a free loop deck, all you gotta do is join the Discord and I'll be announcing the giveaways in there. So just join the server. If you end up with a loop deck, you can select which one you're using here and then you can make profiles. So this is how I have it set up for when I'm live streaming gaming stuff. I pretty much use it for streaming and editing, but it can be used for literally any program. You can just customize it fully. So these are my DaVinci Resolve setups. And then this is for when I'm gaming or just chilling. Okay. So it actually cut all four of those videos. And now if you zoom in by holding in sh option and scrolling, you can see it's cut every single individual clip from this video from all of these videos. So now it's way easier for me, like if I need this shot of flowers, I can just pull this up, copy it, bring it into the main edit and paste it right in there. Using this clip, I wanna show you guys how to automatically make subtitles really quickly because that's a really popular thing. And a lot of you might be making YouTube videos or shorts, reels, TikToks, and subtitles are huge with those things. So I have this set up with the loop deck where it's super quick. I just hit create subs. And then I, I usually do like 30 um, and then I just hit create. And now DaVinci Resolve is automatically creating subtitles for my video. And I don't have to go through and manually type out everything I'm saying. And it's actually very fast. Isn't that crazy? I'm saying, okay, the goods are acquired. And it just automatically did that for me. Now, if you want to do that manually, you would just select on the audio you want. I would just solo that track. So it's only reading this and you go to timeline create subtitles from audio. It just takes too long. So that's why I fast tracked it with the loop deck. Um, if you want to change how these subtitles look, all you do is click on this new subtitle track that it created for you. Just click in here and then you can go to track. And then let's say you want to use Bebas, and then you can change it. It will change that for every single one that you're making. So then you can go back and basically just like fine tune things if you want it to connect there or if you want to like adjust something or if it gets something wrong, which it does once in a while, you can just go through and you can just say like, the, you know, fix it. Okay. The cheeks are required. You know what I'm saying? So it's very intuitive. That's all it is. And it's amazing for YouTube shorts, reels, TikToks. Obviously this doesn't look like a legit video because it's just examples. So I'm going to show you guys what like a finished big project would look like. I'm going to click home and I don't have to worry about saving because DaVinci auto saves, which is amazing. I actually still do it a lot by hitting command S, but you don't have to. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to client edits. And this is the YouTube products I do for this guy that I work with. <laughs> I should probably change these titles. Anyway, this is a big video that I just finished yesterday. And I just want to show you guys what a finished project looks like. So you can see my file structure is the exact same for the client edits that I do. So if I go into timelines, let's look at main edit V2. This was the final. And that's another thing to keep in mind is if you want to go back and make changes to a main edit, it's always good to just like right click, duplicate, and then just name it V3. So you can always go back and reference your previous edits if you accidentally delete something. Trust me, just do this. It will save your butt, I guarantee, in the future. Let's look at this final edit here. This is what a video looks like finished in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just gonna pull this up 
expand everything a little bit just so you can see. It's honestly not that complicated. And this video is kind of like a mini documentary, which is wild. So don't get overwhelmed by this. This is from somebody who's been editing for a really long time, but just know that this doesn't have to be a complicated thing. I'm gonna quickly break down just a few things, but I'm not gonna get too advanced on you guys. One thing I'd like to note is that I keep all of my A-roll very organized on the exact same timeline here. So you can see I have an A-roll, then I have interview footage on the second one, I have B-roll on the third one, and then I have graphics on the fourth timeline up here. So. I keep things very organized so that it's really easy to find stuff and I can just keep it on separate channels and you'll thank me in the future. And for audio, I also keep every source on a separate track. So this microphone that I'm using right here, I would keep on a separate track from this one. If I were using both in a video, I would just keep them completely separate so that when I edit one source of audio, I don't have to put the same settings on this microphone because it might make this one sound wonky if I'm using the settings for this one. I'm not gonna get any further in depth on audio editing or any of that stuff in this video. If you are a little bit more advanced or you wanna learn some more advanced techniques with sound design, color grading, that kind of stuff, check out my other video where I went more in depth on switching completely from Premiere to DaVinci and like kind of going a little bit more in depth with sound design, color, and that kind of stuff. Let's go back to the edit tab and look at our final glorious edit. We've added in our music from our music folder. We've adjusted those levels by clicking here and, and adjusting our volume and that kind of stuff. And you wanna export your video so you can get this dang thing on YouTube. Well, the export tab is right here. It's called deliver. This is where you export your final files to put them wherever the frick you want. I've made a preset for YouTube and you can totally feel free to copy mine if you'd like. So it's Y2 2K23, um, but I'll just run you through it. So I'm gonna name this, you know, Final Cheeks V1. And you can choose where you wanna save it. So in my YouTube videos, I have that folder for video exports. So that's where we would save it. Um, so for the video settings, I do QuickTime and H.265. And basically the H.265 will give you a smaller file size, but still quality. And then I have it set to 4K and then 23.976, like we set up our project in the beginning. And then I set the quality to 20,000 um, and I restrict it. So it always sets it to that. For encoding, I do main 10. It looks great on YouTube. I do a multi-passing code so that it just cleans it up and keeps it looking really nice when I'm exporting. For data levels, I go full just to make sure it looks as good as it can. And this is where I put the Rec 709 and the Gamma 2.4 tag. Basically, that's just making sure your export looks exactly how we set it up in the beginning when we did those preferences. And then I have these things checked and it makes my videos look good. So I just keep leaving it at that. <laughs> if you do have subtitles, like we talked about earlier, you can also export the subtitle and burn it into the video. If you don't select that, it won't show up in your video. So. I've made a preset for vertical videos and it has this automatically burned in like that. So just set up your presets however you need them, but I'm gonna keep that off for now. So I would hit add to render queue and then this is select. I would just hit render all and it would start exporting out my video. But if you wanna step up your game and ensure that you're gonna be using a program that will be supported for years and years to come, Resolve is the promised land. Hope you liked this video, if you did, like it, subscribe, and watch this video because this one's way cooler, dude. Like, insane. You're not going to believe what happens. See you guys.